Hello, everyone. We are talking, having a discussion about whether or not it's the sign that the preacher carries, not only myself, but others that are preaching on the streets as well. At times, they carry signs that show a list of sins. And we are having this discussion whether or not it's the sign that causes the uh, behavior of the people uh, to become erratic because of the sign that's being displayed or is it what he is preaching Uh, that's the question is it the preaching the word of god that causes uh the tumult the uh, rise in this wicked behavior and causes these people to do things that i believe at times that they wouldn't even do in their normal everyday life but when a person is carrying the sign and preaching the word these people, these souls get into a type of, of weird behavior. I mean, we've seen some crazy things out there. We've had a, a woman squirming around on the ground, acting like she was a snake. We had a man with devil horns uh, pull up his shirt and, and, and show off something that he had installed into his body. We've had, we've had people go into a type of contortions with their body and squirm around like serpents and we've had people with the laughing spirit that would just laugh in a demonic way like a clown uh we've had uh, people just i I remember when i started preaching i would have uh people listen and also would have people that would be so irritated i remember this was when i first started preaching i think this was like the second or third session of preaching well let me just take you back to the first when i first started preaching my first sermon out in the open air i went to a a dock in my old city in stockton california and uh at the waterfront they call it and there were people fishing there and i just go there with the cell phone i had a little small sprint cell phone they don't make those types anymore i had this little cell phone i just put it on record and i started preaching i just wanted to you know just record this involvement with with preaching and this experience and i just started preaching for just for like three or four minutes and it was silent there, and they were fishing. They turned around, they're listening to me. All of a sudden, one of the guys pushed pushed the button on the radio and blast the music. Well, that got me a little a little agitated to where, well, should I stop or should I keep going? So I just said, well, I'm just going to keep on preaching. So I kept preaching for about another minute or so, and he turned it off. Another guy came and turned it off, said, no, just let him preach. And I continued to preach there for a few more minutes, turned around and walked away. That was the first preaching session. It wasn't all welcoming, but there was opposition, even in the beginning. And I wasn't holding, I was not holding a banner. I had a little small cell phone to my side. I didn't have a preaching shirt on. I didn't have a banner. None of that. I just wanted to go out there and testify of the gospel and the judgments of Jesus Christ. On another occasion, I took uh, my preaching to the downtown area, uh, to the square, where there was a movie theater and, and there was an open air area for me to preach and i began to preach there and people were listening and other people got agitated i remember a woman walked by she's like walking toward me but she's veering off to the right and she looks at me and she just yeah she has in her hand a snapple a snapple uh, bottle and she raises it up i i was thinking that she was going to throw it directly at me and she gets out she lets out this yell and she smashes it on the ground right in front where she's walking And the glass just splatters all over the place. And she walks away. And it was at that time that I realized just bringing the word of God, the light, to an area where there is darkness and where these people, these souls are dwelling in darkness and they're very comfortable in their darkness because uh, sin is, is secret at times and it likes to be hidden and it likes the dark, sneaky behavior. When you bring the light of God into that, the word of God into that, that's when there's uh, chaos. It's not because of the preacher. It's because of the word of God. And why do I say this? Well, we have to look for a type of verse or verses that will complement, that will that will harmonize with what I'm saying. And, And in John 7, 7, this is what the Lord brought to my attention. The world cannot hate you. This is Jesus Christ speaking. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. 
Well, why is that, Jesus? Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Now, you can see that for yourself. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it. And this goes for the preacher, the teacher, the one who's trying to live on the straight and narrow, the one who's trying to uh, come against a culture that is inundated with evil and evil behaviors. Because you testify of it that the works are evil, there's a contradiction, and they will hate you. Now, is this universal? Not necessarily. There are exceptions. There are people in the world that are not born again, that may be heathen, that will allow you to preach, that will uh, have your back, so to speak, that will make way for you. For some reason or another, that's how God puts it into that person. And there may be people on the Christian path that will appreciate the preaching. They will not hate you. They understand that it opposes their lifestyle because they understand that they are living in a certain lifestyle that's not right with God, and they receive this wake-up call through the preaching, through the Word of God that you are preaching, and they get convicted. And and that's something that, that strengthens them to do better, to get on the right path. So they will not hate you, those people. But generally speaking, Jesus is saying, is the world will hate you because you are testifying that their works are evil. Generally speaking, the world will hate you. Amos 5.10, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Isaiah 30, verse 9, as we close, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. They will not hear the law of the Lord which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So that is what they want. Get ye out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Get out, Get of, out here. of here. We don't we want, want you want here. here. Go home. Go home. If you're just walking as a normal human being without the Spirit of God, without the power of the Holy Ghost, without understanding of this service, this mission, then a person can get offended. They can take these feelings to heart. They can take these statements to heart. They can get in their feelings. And that's why Jesus said some of the seed is going to be thrown on a certain part of the ground where the sun is going to come and it's going to scorch the seed because it never has root. And those who are going to uh, be on fire for a season, but they will get offended eventually and they will turn away. Different type of seed. You have to have a type of rhino skin to be out there preaching the word of God to a lost generation, to a wicked generation, to a people who oppose, who have hatred towards God's word. It's not you as an individual. It's not the color of your skin. It's not the way you look or anything like that. It's because of what is coming out of you through the words that you speak, the power of the word. Get out of here. Get out the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease before us. We don't want to hear about the Holy One of Israel. We don't want to hear about the law of God. We don't want to hear about how we need to turn and re repent and reform our ways. Basically, we don't want you here. We want to continue in our lifestyle of wickedness and sometimes you can just take a little bit here and there from these other translations but you don't want to stay in them too long because they will uh, uh, water down uh, the potency of the word of God but take a look at the new living translation forget all this gloom get off your narrow path stop telling us about your holy one of Israel get off your narrow path what did Jesus say straight is the gate and narrow is the way Forget all this gloom. We don't want to talk about, you know, I talked to, <laughs> you've seen it for yourself. I mean, you've seen it for yourself. The lukewarm girl, Santa Barbara University, I believe. That was the, the college we were preaching at. I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. I remember she said, no, don't go to Revelation. Don't go to the end. Go to Genesis. Go to Genesis. Why do we want to go to Revelations? Why are you trying, you're trying to look at Revelations. What That's the end. Why don't you start with Genesis? No, hold on, hold on. Why don't you start back there? Let's go to Forget all this gloom. 
We don't want to hear about the end. Go to Genesis. Stay in Genesis. Go to the beginning. We don't want to hear the end result. We don't want to hear the consequences of our sinful lifestyle. We don't want to hear the judgments of God. Get out of here. Cease from before us. Stop speaking about the Holy One of Israel. That's what it's about, folks. It's not about the sign. It's not about uh, the list of sins. Those play a small role, but what it's really about is that Word of God that is there to set the captives free, to give light and sight to the blind, that Satan is fighting so strongly against because he wants to keep them in darkness, utter darkness, until the end, until time runs out. His goal is to steal, kill, and destroy, plain and simple. But Jesus Christ came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Praise God. Until next time, stay awake, stay alert, and stay on the path. In Jesus' name.